In this video I'm going to show you how to wallpaper around an internal corner. This is the wallpaper that I'm putting on and I'll show you some of the equipment that I'm going to use. This is a plumb bob. Now I'm using a plumb bob instead of a spirit level because I can't fit a spirit level in my pocket. Spirit levels are okay in some circumstances when you put in lining paper on and you want a horizontal line across the wall. With a plumb bob, there's two different methods really. You can use it as a snap line and you can use chalk. And sometimes you need different colours depending on the wall, the, the colour of the wall you're on. I tend just to use a pencil to mark at the back of the line. Now, I also use a paper hanging brush instead of a spatula. A lot softer um, and I think spatulas can scuff the front of some papers. You're also going to need a tape measure. Now, cutting your paper, some people like blades, snap blades. This is a wheel knife. But I like to use scissors where possible because in some circumstances you do have to use a blade. Uh, this straight edge I use when there's no ceiling lines or you've got no edge to cut the wallpaper to. You can mark using your spirit level a horizontal line or your plumb line for a vertical line and then put this up it and use your blades to cut the paper. You also may need seam rollers depending on what type of paper you're putting on. Moving on to the adhesive. This is one you have to mix with water and it's okay for a lot of papers. Heavy vinyls you may need a ready mixed paste also, if you've got condensation problems, you're better off using a ready mixed paste. Kitchens, bathrooms. To apply it, you can use a roller, or which I prefer is a flat brush. Now, I'm going to actually use this B line. I'll just show you this. So, this B line hangs up to 10 rolls, it's got a great slip and it's also got added PVA and it contains a fire retardant so any specialised wall coverings um, that are fire retardant this is the stuff you want to be using. With the added PVA it gives it extra strength. Uh, some people say you should put PVA on a wall before hanging wallpaper but there you go added PVA in that paste. The all purpose, again, it's very good, extra strong, um, it can hang all types of papers, perfect for kitchens and bathrooms. You're also going to need some overlap adhesive, which I've already got ready here with a brush, which again is pure bristle. I'll just show you some different makes of overlap adhesive. The one I like using the most is the Solvite and that's because I find it's got the best grip. The B line is quite good as well. So is the Barter line. The DL is the cheapest and it's okay if you're on a budget. This wallpaper, it's a repeat pattern of 64 centimetres. So, what I always do is the first foot of the paper that has been rolled on the front, I'll cut it off because it's always slightly damaged along the edge. 
So in fact I'm going to cut off a bit more than a foot to where the edge looks nice and neat. Just do about there. Now I've already measured the lengths I want. Always open your paper face up so you can see the pattern and you can see if there's any damage on the pattern. Now I only need 5 foot lengths because it's only a demonstration. So take your tape measure, measure down 5 foot. you always got to make sure your paper's straight on the bench because when you make your cut if it's not straight your paper's not going to be cut straight so five foot mark With it being a repeat pattern, it'd be easy enough. Now, depending sometimes where you cut it at the bottom depends where it's going to line up at the top. And a repeat of 64 centimeters, you can have a lot of wasted times. Now, I usually mark the top of the paper on the back. And then once you've done that, you want to roll it the other way so you break its back, as we call it. down on the paper and what this does it stops it from rolling back on you once you roll it out you'll see a lot of videos on YouTube where people are putting pots of paste or sticking something on the end of the paper so it doesn't roll back on themselves basically amateurs there you go Keep them in the centre of your bench and taking your first piece, put it up to the edge. Now that's ready to paste, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and plumb my line on the wall. So what you want to do first of all, is take a measurement of your paper on the width, which is 21 inches. What you need to do is, looking at the corner, you need to see where the deepest part goes in because that is not straight. It actually is like a dog's leg. So, the deepest part is further up here. So that's where I'm going to take my first measurement. I'm going to measure out now the paper itself was 21 inches 
and I need to go around that corner by a quarter of an inch to allow the overlap of the paper. So what I'm going to do is put a mark on this side at 20 and 3 quarters. And then taking your plumb line. Now at this point, if I was using a spirit level, I'd have to go and grab my spirit level. Using a plumb line, it's in my back pocket. Speeds the job up. So taking your plumb line on that mark. A few pencil marks behind the line. do is just check where I've put some of them marks that the paper's not running out. That's perfectly fine that is. So again on this next piece I'm going to find the deepest part which again is just about up here. And I'll put another mark. But this time I'm going to make it at 23 quarters and an, eight, and an eighth. So basically just an eighth under 21. Because when you're papering into a corner, you can't just cut the paper straight in the corner because it never looks right. The paper has always got to be overlapped. Now, that means you've got to allow a little bit of a return and then a little bit of return the other way and cut off the excess. So it is always really difficult to get the pattern matched in the corner 100%. You can only do your best. So I'll put the line down here. Again, I'll just double check that with the tape measure. That's actually running out now. So what I'm going to do is I have to remark that. It's obviously the lowest parts at the bottom. So this time, going from the bottom, Do the mark again, just an eighth under the 21. Now the difference between them marks is about half an inch. So your pattern up that corner, it just ain't going to be straight. So, and it's nothing you can do as a decorator because it's just the corner. So going off that bottom mark this time,
so that's not too bad. I'm now ready to go and paste to my paper and put my first length up. Now usually when I go around a corner I'll paste one, allow it to soak, hang that, paste the other and then allow that to soak and hang that one. Because if you paste them both at the same time it may take you too long to do any trimming and it's over soaked. If it's on a straight wall you can paste three lengths and you've not a problem. Right, so let's go and paste them then. So when you're pasting your paper, make sure you put plenty of paste on and work away from the edge. And make sure you have several passes over that edge. never have too much paste on your paper really. You can have too little. So make sure you put plenty of paste on. The edges are really important to get that paste on. Now, on the instructions, it says allow to soak for five minutes. It also says fold the paper and then roll it up. Not heard that one before, but I can only do that one so much. So I'm going to leave that now for five minutes soaking. Right, paper's ready to go up. And off this first plumb line. Always follow your plumb line down as far as you can before you let the rest of the paper onto the wall. And then using your paper hanging brush you want to be pushing from side to side. Not up and down because you'll stretch the pattern from side to side. When you're cutting round things, sometimes you need to make a few relief cuts and allow the paper to sink in and then do a few more. Sometimes you can mark the scissors with the back of your mark the paper with your scissors.
I should say is if the paper wrinkles a little bit because it's out, you can put a few relief cuts in it just into the corner, which just helps it sit back a bit neater. And then with a clean damp cloth, you want to wipe any paste off any woodwork. first piece up. Make sure your edge is stuck down. And I'll go and paste the next one now. So we're ready for the second piece. Never try to grab the paper down the edges because you can pull paste off and it's, uh, you can leave the edge where it can unstick very easily. Now follow your plumb line down roughly because what you need to do is allow your pattern to come across and then see where it meets and then allow a little bit of movement so the pattern can come together. Making sure you're on your plumb line. It's not easy at all. And once you're quite satisfied with whereabouts your pattern's lining up, you can then make sure it's on your plumb line and begin to smooth the paper out from side to side. Never up and down, always side to side. Now you can see there's a lot of overlap here well, that's because the wall is so much out because as you come down here it's only down to a quarter of an inch you never want to pull it in paper too much because you can tear it very easily I'm just looking for the cloth then Sure, it's on the plumb line, it's slightly off at the bottom there. It's always about slight adjustments at times. Once it's on and it's dry, you can't adjust it, so you're better making sure. That's okay now. I'm going to cut this bottom off first. Try marking it with the scissors first. That's not too bad, I can see that. Sometimes if you can't see it when you've marked it with your scissors, you can always put a fine pencil line across it and make sure you cut the pencil line off.
Now, this one going up here on the corner, I'm going to mark it with your scissors. And sometimes it's better to look at the back of the paper for the line. Now, that's not marked it as good as I want it to. So, I'm going to resort to using a pencil. Now, what you've got to make sure is when you put the pencil line on, you're better off putting it on this side and cutting it off than marking that side and trying to cut it on that side because you'll cut too much paper off. So again, on that paper, on this one. It's all about being confident in what you do. Let's pull enough off so we've got a bit of relief. And you've got to make sure you cut that pencil line off. Again, it's not easy with wet paper, especially even with a blade, because it just it's like tissue paper. As soon as you pull on with a blade, it rips. Now that just needs wiping back with a cloth and then putting some overlap adhesive on the back of the paper and then sticking it back. But what I'll do is give you a quick look at that with the camera now. Again, it's not easy, but that is pretty good for a corner that is more than an inch out either way. So all I've got to do is wipe the paste off and put some overlap adhesive on that and it's finished. 